Welcome back to 10 Minute Tech. Let's take a look at the evolution of channels. In the early days of Photoshop, you had one layer called the canvas and one channel called an alpha channel, and that was it. Today, you can have thousands of layers and thousands of channels, and it's given you file formats that are much more flexible. Now, I'm sure some of you come from the airbrush world and you've used Frisket. Frisket is a sticky film that you would lay over a piece of artboard, and with an X-Acto knife, you'd cut out a stencil, and you would paint with your airbrush to that hard-edged stencil. Well, that's somewhat what a selection does. If I go over here to my Marquee tool, and I click and drag out a selection, well, selections are temporary in Photoshop. The marching ants, as we call them, are temporary. If I close my file, the marching ants go away. But let's suppose that I'm not done with my selection, but I have a meeting to go to. Well, I can go right over here to Quick Mask, and Quick Mask is a temporary channel. If I click on Quick Mask or tap the letter Q, which is the keyboard shortcut for both Windows and Mac, I get a temporary channel. And if I were to go to my Channels panel, you'd see a channel called Quick Mask. Now let's suppose we've got a meeting to be at in just a minute or two. I could go to File, Save As, and Photoshop would recognize that we have created an alpha channel. Remember from our earlier videos, a channel, a mask, and an alpha channel are all the same thing. If we save in Photoshop format with the alpha channel, that quick mask will be saved with it. And let's call this image Channels vs. Layers 2 and save it with the alpha channel. Now, let's suppose we go to our meeting. Okay, our meeting is over, and we come back, and we open Channels versus Layers 2. You'll notice that our quick mask is still intact, but to get the channel or mask, which is a save selection, back into a temporary selection, we would need to load the selection. Now, there are a couple different ways you can do that, but with quick mask, it can be done with a keyboard shortcut. If I were to just tap the letter Q again, I would get my marching ants. Quick mask is quick, consequently there's only one quick mask per image. But you could have dozens of channels. And if you'll remember, a channel and a mask and a quick mask are all basically the same thing. There are many different ways to save a channel. If I go up here to the select menu, and I choose Save Selection, I can save this temporary selection permanently. Let's call this box 1. I now have a channel called Box 1, even though I typoed it. And if I were to deselect, I still have my channel saved. So if I were to go to File, Save, Photoshop recognizes that we still have an alpha channel. Now, if I want to turn this channel back into a selection, I could load it. But I can't use a direct keyboard shortcut like the letter Q. I could, however, go to Select, Load Selection, and I could load Box 1. Or, another method is with a keyboard shortcut using Control on Windows, that's Command on Mac. Control or Command, click, and that loads the selection. If I turn on the visibility of box 1, the eyeball, I'm actually editing the RGB channels, but I'm looking at box 1. And with my, mar tool, my key, marquee tool selected, I could actually drag my selection down and to the left a little bit. Let's create the illusion of a drop shadow. If I were to go to the select menu and choose the feather command, feather means to soften the edge. So let's feather this by 30 pixels. I now have a selection that is rectangular but with a soft edge. And if I were to go to Select, Save Selection, let's call this one Feather Box. So now I have the hard edge box and I have the feathered box. If I wanted to activate or load Box 1, it's Control or Command, click, but notice I'm actually editing Feather Box. Let's go to Edit, Fill, 
and fill this with black. Feather box, if I deselect, now looks like the negative of a drop shadow. So if I were to go to my RGB channels and load feather box, controller command click, I could fill this with black and create the illusion of three dimension. Well, in the early days, that's the only way you could do this. You'll notice that I have a background layer, just one layer, but the illusion of a drop shadow. I don't know why anybody in this day and age would actually use just one layer. Why not save your layers and use them in Photoshop later? Let's back up a few steps. Edit, step backward. I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control Alt Z on Windows, that's Command Option Z on the Mac. And we're backed up to where we have just one layer. I'm going to load box one. Control click, and I'm going to copy this to its own layer. Layer, new layer via copy. Now you'll notice I have a new layer called layer one. I'm going to turn off the underlying layer, and let's just rename this layer box layer one. I now have a box layer that with my move tool I could move around. I could turn that layer on and off. I could also change blending modes. Well, what I'm going to do is go to Layer, Layer Style, Drop Shadow. We're going to use a Drop Shadow effect. Now the beauty here is that I can turn this Drop Shadow on and off, but I can also move over to the main image window and drag the shadow around. The advantage here is flexibility. I can turn the layer on and off. I can turn the shadow on and off. But one thing I can't do is I can't move the clouds inside the shadow. Let's take box layer one and throw it in the trash. And instead, we're going to duplicate our background layer. Layer, duplicate layer. And I know some of you know the keyboard shortcut that does the same thing, Command or Control J. Let's call this box layer 2. I now have a standard layer, which can be turned on and off, and a background layer. What if I wanted to hide part of box layer 2? I'm going to load box 1, the channel, control click, command click on a Mac, and instead of cutting out box layer 2, I'm simply going to hide it from view using a layer mask. At the bottom of my layer panel, you'll see an icon labeled Add Layer Mask. A layer mask is a channel that hides part of a layer. If I were to click Add Layer Mask, Box Layer 2 now has a channel that hides part of it. And you'll notice there's a chain link between the layer and the mask. That chain link means that if I move the layer, the mask moves with it. If I unlink these, I'm currently working on the mask. You can tell that by the corner brackets around the mask itself. That means I could move the mask without moving the layer. Or I could click on the layer and move the layer without moving the mask. Or I could link them together. And if I were to go to Layer, Style, Drop Shadow, I'd have an effect that looks virtually identical to what we had before, only this time we can move the content inside the mask. Much more flexible. File is a little bigger. But do you want quantity or do you want quality? In our next video, we'll look at more advanced uses of channels. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.